I want to uh, just share with you, I just heard a question this morning, and I'm going to ask you the question, and we're going to see where all this goes. What in the world matters? Let's just let that sink in. What in the world matters? I want to read uh, John chapter 17, beginning with verse 6. John chapter 17 and verse 6. Uh, I think we've been, I know, right, through the years we've been deceived about a lot of things and uh, had a lot of help uh, in believing wrong and consequently if you believe wrong you pursue the wrong things your thinking's wrong and all that and um, the Lord's trying to get us straightened out uh, believe me he has a full time job but he's, he's working okay thank God he's working uh, Jesus doing the speaking in John chapter 17 says I have manifested your name unto the men whom you gave me out of the world note that out of the world they were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things, whatever you have given me, are from you. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you, and they have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world. Note that. A lot of people today are praying for the world. But Jesus said, I pray for them whom you've given me, not for the world, uh, but for them, those that are yours. You see that? All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I am grateful. Oh, pardon me. I am glorified in them. And now I'm no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep them through your own name, those whom you have given me, that they may see, or that they may be one as we are. I'm trying to think ahead instead of reading, okay? While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. And none of them are, is lost except the son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now I come to you. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them. Because they're not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from evil. The evil of the world, if you will. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify or set them apart through your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world... Even so have I also sent them into the world. Power of attorney, if you will. Then turn with me to James chapter 4. And I want to read one verse of scripture there. James chapter 4. And look at verse 4. You adulterers and adulteresses... Do you not that the friendship of the world is enmity or an enemy of God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Then turn with me to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John 2 and I want to begin reading with verse 15. 1 John 2 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Now really what's, what's going on here, Jesus is making a distinction between the world, the things of the world, and God. The world being a system. Um, we can call it world system. He's not talking about the soil or the land per se. He's talking about what's going on in the land, on the land. You understand what's going on in people's hearts and minds and how their attention is on the temporary and not on the eternal. So with that in mind, what in the world matters concerning the temporary? And here's the thing that I believe that the Lord is wanting us to get focused upon. What matters in the world is what we do with what we have. We have a commission from God. As a matter of fact, Mark 16 says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That matters. You with me? Make disciples of all nations. That matters. But trying to accumulate the things of the world and trying to um, outdo other people in the world and trying to impress people in the world, none of that should matter to us. Not at all. As a matter of fact, if, we are, if we're truly obeying God, walking according to the will of God to fulfill His purpose, the world won't like you. Why? Because you bring conviction to them. You understand that, that darkness cannot appreciate light. Because if light comes into the darkness, then all the things, all the activity that's going on in the darkness is exposed. There's a guilt there. You can, you can walk, walk up to someone, not say a word or anything, and all of a sudden they get nervous. It's sort of like a police officer with a criminal. I mean, he's just walking by minding his own business. Not thinking the thing, but if you are guilty of some crime, you're going to get real fidgety in his presence. And that's where the world is with the believer. And see, this is what was going on in Jesus' day. He came into the world, but he was not of the world. He had his citizenship somewhere else. He was taking his directions and, 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 and demands and commands from somewhere else, a different source. And because of that, the world was very uncomfortable with him. And understand that the religious system is part of the world. It is a world system. It's not a system birthed by God. And so he made them so nervous, if you will, and so irritated that it wasn't too long into his ministry, they started plotting how they could get rid of him and actually attempted to kill him on different occasions. Why? He's not of the world. What matters to him is not what matters to them. These people were worried about position. We're going to have to do something because if we don't, the Roman government's going to take our position away. We're going to lose our clout, our prestige, and all these things. That was really what brought about the crucifixion, other than God had already planned what was going to happen. And he knew the hearts of people. And they're just playing out what God had already said before the first man was created. But God is not wanting us to get caught up into the world because if you get caught up in the things of the world, you won't do the will of God. And this is temporary. This is temporary. But isn't it interesting how much attention we put on the temporary and how little attention we put on the eternal? And that must change. What I do on earth in this life as far as worldly things go, they pass away. 
But what I do for God on this earth is eternal. And you do understand that your rewards is not for what you're naturally doing, but for what we're doing by the Spirit. What we're doing that is having eternal value and eternal effect on people's lives. And that's what God is wanting the body of Christ to awaken to, is we have responsibility right here while we're in this world, but we're not to be a part of the world. If we become a part of the world, we forget what our mission is. And that's where most modern day Christians are. They, they're, they're lost. They don't know what their mission is. So they're creating their own missions. Religion creates its own missions rather than carrying out the mandates of God. Go into all the world and tell them the good news about Jesus Christ. Get them indoctrinated into who the Father is. Get them indoctrinated into who the Son is. Get them indoctrinated into who the Holy Spirit is. Let them know how they can live their lives pleasing to God right here in this world. Not being of it. Being eternal beings living in a natural world. Having great effect on people who are in the world. So what in the world matters? Spiritual things. Spiritual things. The hearts and lives of people. That's what matters. What did Jesus come to do? Seek and save the lost? Do you know when they tried to make him king, he left town? No, that's not going to happen. I'm not here for the things of the world. I'll let God crown me the king of kings. <laughs> <laughs> you, you follow me? And it's amazing how many people are looking for, for these temporary things that are going to pass away. And yet oblivious to the things that are going to last forever. What in the world matters? The things of the world or the things of God? See, the Spirit in us is jealous for us. He's not wanting the world to woo us and win us. He's wanting us to have such a relationship with God that is sort of like the Song of Solomon with the, uh, the beloved and the lover. You know, all she's talking about is her lover. And people start talking to her about other things and she just immediately goes back to the lover. And finally they said, what makes him so special? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Yeah. And she starts telling what makes him so special. He's so different. And see, we should have this revelation of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. That he is so different. The spirit of God is not like the spirit of the world. You follow me? The spirit of the world is after what they can get from you. The spirit of God is after you for an eternal relationship. Had you rather just be used up and discarded? Or would you want to be utilized for God and live in glory with Him forever? See, that's what it's all about or should be for us. And so when Jesus is praying, actually, if we would have read all that, he said, I'm not just praying for these, but for those who believe because of the words that these people are teaching or preaching. You understand? So that would include us. This prayer is for us that we're here. We're to make impact on the world. The world is not to make impact on us. But if the world matters to me, then the world will have impact on me. I should matter to the world. Does that make sense to you? That we're, we're bringing about a, a change. We're, we're having such an effect on people's lives that is bringing them out of the destruction of the world. You know, they're pursuing things, they think they're having fun, and the whole, the whole uh, motive behind it is to take you out to where you don't live eternally with the Lord. Destroy you. You understand? And when Satan's through with you, I mean, he's, he'll use you up and dump you. 
And then what do you have? You've lost everything, including the eternal things. God wants us to understand why we're here on earth to represent him. You understand we were chosen in the very beginning. God in his foreknowledge knows the outcome. It's not that he predestined you. He could just tell what was going to happen with you before you got here. He sees the end from the beginning. So that's not a problem telling you how it's going to turn out. He already knows. That's why he could tell Jeremiah. Before you were conceived. I knew you. And before you were conceived. God knew you. And God said before your mother gave birth to you. I already had ordained you or appointed you to be a prophet. I already had your purpose in place. God has your purpose in place. But how many people pay attention to God to where they actually come to know their purpose? No, the world will try to captivate your attention from the very early age. You understand, as a child, the world will try to get your attention. And it's, a, it's amazing to me how much the parents aid and abet in this. Because they assist the devil in his scheme and start putting things of the world into the children, putting things into the world, and over a period of years, the world captivates them. And so their attention is on the things of the world, not on the things of God. And those things matter to you. Do you understand? And I mean, I could give you all kinds of scenarios. I, I mean, I can look at my own life. You know, there for many, many years, uh, racing in specific, I started to say sports, but racing in specific, that was what mattered to me. That's what I lived for. Now, you're talking about a deception. That's a deception. And when you age out of these things, you just sit around and talk about it. You know, the armchair quarterbacks and all this type stuff, you know, they, 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 maybe they excelled when they were young. That had their attention. That captivated them. They can tell you stats and, and who's, who's who and all that. Don't know much about God, but they can tell you all those things. Why? Because that's what mattered to the things of the world mattered. I look in the religious arena. They can tell you and quote you, you tell, uh, tell you all about these great old preachers and quote all these things and tell you a lot of biography. But they're talking about what somebody else did and they're not doing anything. And what matters to them is nothing more than history. I like to be on the cutting edge of things. You understand? I, I want to be active. I mean, when I went to the military, I didn't want to go reserves. I wanted active, active duty. If I'm going to be in there, then uh, I feel like I need to see some action. Well, if I'm going to be in the kingdom of God, I need to see some action in the kingdom of God. So what matters to me is not what the world has to offer, but what the kingdom of God has to offer. So what should matter to us in the world is the kingdom that lives on the inside of us, not the kingdoms that are ruling outside of us. Are you with me? This is to prov provoke us. You understand the message is to provoke us. As a matter of fact, I find that most everything God's speaking to me these days is to provoke me to do the right thing. You understand? To do the right thing. Don't let that capture your attention or you'll do the wrong thing. It will divert you from doing the right thing. You know you can do good things that will keep you from doing the right thing. The worst enemy to good is right. Uh, uh, right is good. Let me say it again to get it right. <laughs> the worst enemy of right 
is good because you can justify the good that you do that keeps you from doing what God called you to do. Saul, so, you know, when he was supposed to totally wipe out the Amalekite, everything, all the animals, everything, and, and he listened to the people and they kept the best of the sheep. He had a better idea. Oh, this is good. We're going to use this to sacrifice to God. But he disobeyed God. So does God want you to use your disobedience to sacrifice to him? No. And so Samuel told him, obedience is better than sacrifice. You understand? And so what the Lord is wanting us to do is get our minds on why we are here in this world. Why am I here? It's not to see what I can accumulate. It's not to see how smart I can be. It's not to make a name for myself. But our whole objective of being here is representation. God needs representation in the earth. Will I represent him? What's going to matter to me? What they say or what he says? I'd rather hear him say, well done, than them. You with me? Theirs is temporary. His has an eternal reward. You follow me? So what matters to you? What in the world matters to you? Start evaluating See what's captivating your attention because what's captivating your attention will dominate your life. And what I mean by that is it will control you. It will have you running here. It will have you running there. It will have you doing this. It will have you doing that. And for the most part, you're busy doing nothing for the kingdom of God. That is a diversion. What am I doing for God? Why would God invest in me? Because he's looking for a return. You understand? And so you determine whether you're a good investment or a bad investment. What matters to you? Let it be the things of God that you're getting the things of God done on earth. Now see, Jesus' prayer says he wants the will of God, the kingdom of God to come and the will of God to be done on earth. That's what should matter to us, is the will of God being done on earth. How many people kept their nose glued to news yesterday or today because of ungodly activity? You understand? People had rather sit there and, and eat and digest the, the, the evil and the smut, the atrocities, than to, to think about the good news. The world offers you bad news. Jesus offers us good news. We're to give the world good news. The media gives nothing but bad news. And we're slack in our mission we're not getting good news out. If we get the good news out, we could stop the atrocities simply by getting good news out. Tell people what the Bible says. I'm going to tell you what, if the judicial system would read the Proverbs, they'd do away with lawyers. Because there are many things there in the Proverbs that is against someone getting the, the, uh, the guilty off the hook and, being, and victimizing the just. You read it in the Proverbs. That's why we're where, where we are. That's why we are where we are today is because the word of God, the good news is not being sent out into the world and we're letting the world infiltrate the church 
with their mindset. And that's why the church is so goofed up today. Let's get it right. What in the world matters to me? The world doesn't have anything that matters to me. I have something that can have impact in the world. And I intend to expend my life and my energies in getting good news to the world. What they do with it, that's their choice. But I have a mandate from God, and so do you. So let's blossom. Let's get light into a dark world. What matters to me in the world is getting light into it. Do you understand that's the first thing Jesus did? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And God said, what did he say? Light be, light come. God spoke light into existence. You and I can get light into dark regions just simply by speaking the word of God. That's illumination. And it would amaze you how many people have never heard the truth and the principles of the word of God That's why they grew up in darkness. That's why it's in such a mess. So what in the world matters to me? Getting light into it. Obeying God. Getting the kingdom of God established on earth. I'm not willing to give the earth up. That's not what Jesus said to do. To pray that the kingdom of God come and the will of God be done on earth earth as it is in heaven amen so we have a mandate we have a job to do just ask yourself what matters to you and get your priorities in order you understand the spiritual thing should be our number one priority in life and if we'll be following this if we'll be uh, diligent in following the spiritual things Anything that needs to be done naturally, we'll know to do it and get that done as well. It's not that you neglect anything. It's that you put God first place in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The other things fall in place. So we have to get the righteousness, the kingdom of God established here on earth. That's what should matter to us. Not what the world has to offer but what God has to offer to the world. Amen? That's the message. He's offering you to the world so they're going to benefit by you. Amen? Father, I thank you that you bless us indeed. You enlarge our territory. Your hands with us to keep us from evil so that we do not cause pain. And I thank you for blessing us and keeping us and for making your face to shine upon us and being gracious unto us. You lift up your countenance upon us and you give us peace. So, Lord, we gladly invite you to rise up and let your enemies be scattered and let those who hate you flee before you. Amen. Amen. Amen.